what's the UX design process and how is it going to help us design our blog, right? And so it says that it's a systematic approach to developing products that provide relevant and meaningful experiences for users, right? So what are the various stages that we need to look at to guide us? So we have like the first stage, which is the definition stage, right? So what are we trying to achieve? And I mentioned earlier on that we uh, basically want to design a blog, right? The importance of blog, why we need a blog, I think that's something you can research on later on. But then we, at the end of the day, uh, as a, a junior UX designer, we've been tasked to design a blog. And so that is the um, product, final product you are looking at and then the goals we want to achieve to design a, a very SEO-friendly, usable blog. So now that we know our goal or we've defined our goal, right? Um, we come to the next stage, research. Learn from real users through user interviews, focus groups, and usage data analytics, right? So at this stage, this is the stage where, again, if you don't have so much domain knowledge about what um, blogs are, how they are designed, uh, why they are necessary, that is where you do the research, go to Google. Um, for instance, the first thing I would do uh, is what is a blog, how is a blog structured, things like that. So again, we have Google to do all of this work for us at this stage. Uh, in a typical scenario where you do not um, have, let's say, data like this on the web, or you're working a product that has actual customers, right, that you need to interact with them to do your user interviews, that is when you have to go through that process where you set up uh, interview um which users you have user interview questions that is where you do your uh, um, all of those from focus groups and all of those stuff right but then in this particular scenario right we want to design a blog and so the information we need to design a blog is actually on the web for us to use it right so we have a world of information that we can get from the web already proven that we can use right so this tells you about the ux design process the fact that the research stage says that you have to do interviews. Doesn't mean that for everything that you need to do, you have to do interviews. You can modify the process to suit the case that you are looking at, right? So for me as a junior UX designer, at the research stage, I'll just come here, okay, uh, how is the block structure, right? So usually what I do, I just copy this um, and then put it in Figma, right? So um, Again, last week we went through the Figma interface. Uh, you don't need to memorize everything. Just know how to open Figma for now. And then just know how to add a new page. So you click here to add a new page. You can label the page however you want, okay? So this is my research stage where I'm trying to understand how blogs are created. What are the various parts or the structure of a blog? Understanding this basically helps me with my design. So you can see that even on this illustration here, the various parts of the blog is labeled for me to guide me on how I'm going to structure the design and then the content for this particular blog. So what's the structure of the blog looking like? We have like the title, right? So again, there are various things you need to consider when you are designing a blog, right? But then for our design purposes, we are just going to focus on the UI or the structure of the blog. And so we know that every blog, right, has a heading, okay? So what we are going to do here um, is to do something like this. So we just select the text. Also, um, you can just uh, press the keyboard uh, key T to have the text. type here, heading. So we know that the blog needs a heading. Now, um, for most people, they might have their Figma like this, okay? Um, don't worry, uh, that would also work. Uh, I prefer to have it, the background dark. Um, again, I'm sure a lot of people like dark mode. So the way you can do that is with, without anything selected, just come to this side on the right on the design page. And then you can just change the color of the background, however you want it. Now, when you select the text, right, you can zoom in also with your trackpad or your mouse. 
when you select the text, okay, um, and then you have this plus icon and you press on the page, you click on the page, it shows you this for you to be able to type. So once you type, right, there are cases where your text might be black or white, however, you can also change the color of the text. You can change it from here, the fill section here, okay? So what we are trying to do is to lay out um, the structure of the blog. What do we need to actually design this blog? So now, once you are going through this, you realize that you are learning how to use the text tool from Figma. So how to use the text tool, you either press T or you click on this and then you just click on your page and then you just start typing, okay? So that's how to use the text tool, very easy and straightforward. Great. So I want you guys to um, basically look at this image, okay? Um, now let's increase the size of the text a little. So on the right side on the text, you see this. Just type in, let's say 24, that should be fine. So um, we type in something like structure of a blog, okay? And then we can control C, control V to copy and paste. Then we drag it down, okay? Then we press one. The first thing we are talking about is what the main heading. So we need a main heading. Um, the second thing is uh, a feature image. So the feature image is the image you see when you visit the blog page, the, the, the big header image, okay? Um, the third thing we need is, uh, let's say a strong opening or an introduction. So let's say an introduction. The fourth thing we need uh, is let's say uh, the content. And then I think the final thing we would need here uh, is the conclusion. Okay, great. Now, the next thing you learn about using the text tool is how to structure your typography so that it's quite legible. We'll learn more about this as we go on in, uh, during the lesson. But then the next thing I'll teach you about this is you realize that as I'm typing, there isn't much space between the the various um, uh, lines, right? So um, what I'm going to do here is to increase the space between each of these sentences or each of these words, right? The vertical spacing. So when I come here, you see this icon line height, I'm just going to increase it a little. So it provides me some more space, right? So I'll just you know how the structure of our blog is going to be. Right, so now we are at the research phase, okay? So we are learning about how to structure the blog. Now we know that for a blog, we need a main heading, the feature image, the introduction, the content, the conclusion, in order for us to structure the design of our blog, which is fine for now. Now, now that we know this, right, what we are going to do is to start structuring the blog, okay, using something we call a wireframe. Now, let me just come back here and then type what is a wireframe. Now, our previous discussion, I showed you certain things we call the UX deliverables, right? And I'm sure most of you have learned a, a bit more into detail about these things. And you realize that we have one of those things called a wireframe. Okay, so let's see what a wireframe is. So a wireframe is a model in which only lines and vertical and vertices are represented. Um, let me just go to the image and uh, let's see, let's see, let's see which I think this works. Great. So when you look at this, right, you realize that they are using lines and boxes to represent the structure of the website. Okay, so that is how a wireframe works. You the structure of what you are going to design. Okay, so now, in doing our research, we got this here, which is a typical example of what a wireframe is. You realize that when you look at it, it gives you an idea of what the structure 
of our blog is going to be like, okay, so because we are going to focus on these five main things, right? How do we represent that using a wireframe? Okay. So in our previous lesson, we learned how to use the various shapes, right? So you find the shapes on the top left here. So, um, so the next thing we are going to do is just try to see if we can structure this thing using, let's say rectangles only. Okay, and then label them properly. So we select the rectangle. And what we are going to do is just draw out something like this. Okay, let's draw a long rectangle like this. Let's give it a width here of let's say 800 and then a height of 80. So we have this rectangle here. Again, if your Figma background is this color, you can easily just change the color of this. So select the rectangle, go to the fill, and I can change it to any color you want, just so it provides enough contrast for you. But I prefer the background black. Now, so the first thing we are trying to represent is the main heading. When we look here, the main heading is usually one line, right? Which is like an H1 text. So an H1, like HTML semantics, right? The H1 is like the highest or biggest uh, in hierarchy. And so uh, it makes sense to make the blog heading an H1 text. So what we are going to do here is, I'm just going to change the background of this to something like this. And then I'm going to take my text, bring it here and then type main heading. Now, what's happening here? You realize that even though I have the text, right? It looks like it's behind the rectangle. If you face a situation like this, there are two ways you can uh, uh, fix it. You can either right click and then bring it to front like this, or you can select this and send it back, okay? So yet another thing you've learned in Figma. Select the tool, right click, you have a ton of options, things you can do, but then all we need to do is to send it back or bring it forward. So um, that's what you do if you face that situation. So we have this, so we have the main heading. What else do we need? We need a feature image. So there are two ways you can do this, right? Um, because it's an image, let's go here. Um, and ideally, what I would encourage you to do is to use a rectangle to represent the image. So we take a rectangle and we drag it here like this. So again, we give the width of 800 here, and then we can give a height of let's say 400, okay? Um, so let's see, this is our image. And another trick to um, duplicating anything on Figma is to, um, you can either copy paste, right? And then you just drag, okay? Or you can uh, hold option. I think option on Windows is Alt or so, not sure. And then you can drag it to also copy. So option, drag, you see that to duplicate it like that. Okay, cool. So that's another way to duplicate items. So what we are going to do here is, again, we'll just change the, and then you can use any color you want, okay? So let's say for the image, I want to use this bright yellow. Um, so I'll just bring the text here, bring it forward like this to front. And then I'm going to mention this as feature image. Now, again, there is something we call, we call contrast, okay? When you look at these two images, right? These two sections, so the header and then the feature image, the text on them, you realize that one is more legible or visible than the other. What this means is that the one that is more visible has more color contrast. The one that is less visible has low color contrast, right? And so 
part of the design process or part of UX design has this principle of accessibility. And you want to make sure that whatever you are designing is very accessible for users. You realize that we are incorporating the principles. Again, if you were able to go through the laws of UX, right? And some of those design principles and links I shared, you realize that we are starting to incorporate some of those principles as we are going ahead to design. So we want to ensure that everything that we design follows accessibility principles. And so the next thing we are going to do here is to ensure that there is high contracts. Now, if you, if you show this, the white on yellow, to let's say colorblind people or people with low visibility, they won't be able to see it properly. They might not be able to read the, um, the words that you have there. So there are two ways we can do this, right? One way is to probably change the color of this text like this, okay, or black. And then maybe we can increase the font weight. You realize the difference now. Okay, so when you look here and then this, right? This is more legible for people to reach. Another way is for us to just change the background to something that is ensures more color contrast. Okay, so let's see if we can do something like this. Okay, so let's go with something like this because the yellow is too bright. Now we have our featured, featured image. Now the next thing we need is the introduction. Okay, now when you look here, you see that they've, they're using a, a, um, a trick here to show like this is like text. So they use the smaller rectangles in this manner to show like this is actually text. So we are going to do the same thing. So how do we do that? So basically what we are going to do is, again, we know how to draw a rectangle already. So we will just take this and then draw a rectangle, let's say up to this. Uh, make sure it matches, uh, make sure it matches these edges like this, okay? And uh, we have something like this. So we just 800 by 20, okay? So we have something like this. Then with the trick I showed you to copy and paste, right? So just, if you're using a Mac, would press the option key. You realize that when you press the option key, the mouse changes, the pointer changes, right? It means you can duplicate. When you press, I think Windows is Alt. Uh, when you press that, you should see the same thing. And then with this selected, you are just going to press and hold and drag like that. Press and hold and drag, right? Press and hold and drag. And you see that as I'm dragging, it's showing me some red lines, right? So those red lines help me to keep things aligned and then consistent. So, just also keep that in mind. Okay, so, um, so this looks like a paragraph, right? Um, but then what I want us to do is just drag this back a little, just to show that, just to try and mimic text, right? So it looks like a text. So then what we are going to do is we are going to group these elements here, okay? So the next thing you are going to learn now is how to group items on Figma. So there are two ways you can do this. Uh, I, I mean, two easy ways you can do this. The first one is to drag your mouse across this, right click, and then group selection. Okay. So again, right click and then group selection. So that was how you group items on Figma. Another way is just Control or Command G. So with all of this selected, Command G, and then they are now a group. So you can move them together, right? Just like that. Okay, cool. So this is now our uh, introduction. So let me drag this down a little. And then again, with our trick, I'll bring this text here and I'll label this introduction. Um, I believe um, most of you guys uh, code uh, or do front end, right? And so one thing about 
improving your workflow is being able to reuse components or reuse design elements okay and what that that does is help you accelerate how you work it just increases the speed to which you actually execute stuff so we are going to be doing a lot of that here and the first thing we are going to do is to reuse this whole introduction and then the content here so again we'll drag right with our trick we just press option or alt right you see it changes and then we drag this down like this great then we label this as content okay it's the same thing now we learn how to group and ungroup stuff in this case we are just going to duplicate this for a few more times and then we should be good to show this is a content now how did i do what i just did all i did was when i duplicated this i just pressed command or control d so when you when you do this action right figma keeps that acting in the memory right and you can duplicate that action by pressing command d so that's another shortcut you can you don't need to keep it in mind you can go the manual way but as as time goes on you can learn some of these shortcuts so yeah that's just a quick one then the final thing we need right is the conclusion okay so again conclusions is uh, as short as paragraphs so we can do the same thing and pay attention to the red lines and then we can just label this as conclusion so we have our article or block wireframe right so now that we have an understanding of how the block structure looks like right as designers what you usually do is you would want to improve on this right to make it more pleasant and appealing right it's like um i have structured my website content in html how do i make it more appealing for users that is where css and javascript comes in to add the visual styling and interactivity so what we are going to do from here on is look at how we are going to be creative enough to style our blog to make it more pleasing okay so the next thing we are going to look as at is a concept of mood boards now mood boards are a big thing um, that is used during branding now as usual as junior ux designers we are curious so we'll just google search what is a mood board and whatever I'm doing right now is what a lot of designers do. So you don't have to keep everything in your mind, just like a gate developers. Stack Overflow has a lot of responses. Google has a lot of responses that you can basically use to solve your problems. And so just like we are doing is what most people do. This is a typical workflow. That is why I want to go to this approach. So you don't think that you have to keep everything in mind. So these are examples of mood boards. And what's the pattern you are seeing here? You realize that mood boards are usually a set of elements that helps to you to create a visual style. So first of all, let's look at the definition. So an arrangement of images, materials, piece of text, etc., intended to evoke or project a particular style, right? So our goal is to create like a style, right? A, a, a design, um design language or design pattern whatever so that's a mood board back to our design right so we need a mood board that would guide us to how we are going to actually one of the first places that most people go right when they want to create a mood board as designers one of those places is dribble right i'm sure you've already um, seen this site i think i shared it in this um the first it should be somewhere here i think so uh, if it's not um i would i would definitely add it here so i will add it on this uh, here like this okay so one of those places that people go to is uh 
uh, Dribble. Obviously, another place is Google, right? So um, again, we need uh, inspirations for blog. You can do something like this. Then we go to the images. Remind you, we are looking for images. Another place people go um, aside uh, these places is Pinterest. Uh, I believe everybody here goes on Pinterest. Um, so wouldn't come out as a surprise. So there are various ways you can find some of these inspirations and uh, I would encourage you guys to research more into that and know that the, how your design, the, the visual appeal of your design is dependent on how good your research and then your mood boarding is. So if you are doing mood boards and you just limit your search to let's say Google and look at these designs here, which are not very nice, your design will look like these guys, right? So spend more time in doing your mood board because it really helps you uncover um, a lot of ideas. Um, so yeah, so let's start with Dribble. So what are we looking out for? We are looking out for blog UI designs and stuff like that, right? How the blog layout is. Mind you, mood boards also help you understand how you want to lay out your, um, your blog or your article. And so through this design, I just typed blog. And I think I like something like this. So let's let's just open it and see. This looks nice, um, but it doesn't necessarily look like an article. But then again, we'll just save it because I like the way the layout is in the font. And you can also create your own mood board, okay? Now I'm going to copy this text and bring it here. So what I'm going to teach you here is, it's always good, so let's just change the text size to 48 somewhere, yeah. It's always good to group your mood boards to specific things you are looking at for. Now, for this one, I mentioned that I like the text right, the text that they are using, how the text is laid out. So what I'm going to do here is text structure mood boards, right? So this is for text. This column would be for images, so inspiration for images. This column would be for layout, so how the layout is done, the grid and all of those stuff. Okay, so let's, and then maybe, um, because we are doing it for uh, um, uh, our group, I believe our group already has colors and stuff like that, branding. So we'll obviously use that. So let me see, let me create another column for brand. So we are gonna be taking the branding from the, our website, four categories that we are going to create our mood board based on. So first of all, we have one text. So let's go back to Dribble um, and see. I think I like this. This is very clean. This is very um, decent. So what do I like about this? I like the layout and then also the text. So I just copy the image, paste it here. So um, I like the text structure for this, okay? And then I like the layout for this, right? So we are basically going to follow this pattern to create our mood board. So let me just quickly go through this and see uh, another one. Let's see, this is also nice, the text arrangement. So I'm going to copy the image um, and then put this here. Um, images, let's see. So I think I'm good with the structure for now. Let me look for image inspiration. Okay, illustrations are great. I think I like something like this. So for image, so do we want to use illustrations? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see if we can get another inspiration for layout. Oh, this is nice. This is, Oh, it's an it's a it's a video, okay. Um,
Okay. I think I'm good for now here. Let's go to Google. Let's see. I don't think I like anything here. Um, another great example for a blog is Medium, right? So let's just go to Medium. Um, so with Medium, I like the, the way this is structured. So I'm just going to screenshot the layout here. And uh, I'm going to put it here for layout. And I think I like the, okay, layout is fine for this. Let's start, look, this is how a typical blog post looks like, right? So just picture this in your mind, okay? And then let's go to the inspirations that we, we took from the mood board. You see, we have the title, we have the image, then we have the text, okay? So everything you are designing has a principle to how it is designed. That is why before you go into designing any solution, make sure you research about it. Okay, for instance, um, uh, search page design, something like this. Okay, now there are so many examples of search page. What is the common pattern you are seeing here? You realize that it has a hero section and then a search bar. It has a search bar, very big search bar. It has a title and then a search bar. It has search bar. It has search on top here. It has search on top. So you realize that there are specific patterns to how certain things are done. This as well, it has a search bar. Then the results are at the bottom. This as well. It has a search bar and then the results are at the bottom. Okay, we are going with this particular structure here. We know our main heading, feature image, introduction, content, and conclusion. Then during the design, we can add specific things that are uh, specific things that are specific to us. For instance, uh, in the design, we can choose to say, okay, uh, we don't want our blog to be boring. And so we want to add an image here, something like this. So we want to have this section like this. Then we want to have an image somewhere here, like this. You understand? Okay, so it's really about, again, you need to understand the fundamentals of what you are trying to do. Then you get creative, okay? And you get creative by finding inspiration using platforms that are already there or looking at existing platforms. So for instance, when you look at Medium, you open an article, you realize that it follows the pattern we are talking about. It has the title, it has the hero image, and then it has the text, and then some images inside, right? It follows that structure. But then you realize that Medium has this title, then a very huge image. Even though it follows the structure, you realize that they've added their own aesthetics to this design to make it quite unique. But again, this is a very basic mood board. There are quite complex ones. As I said, it can contain icons, illustrations, depending on the use case that you have, right? For the purpose of this, we just need um, these few elements. And also guys, um, don't over inspire yourself be specific about you can get caught in a process where you see so many things you don't know how to make a decision and stuff like that right just first of all set the basics right know how you want your stuff to be and then look for specific things that will inspire you and keep it very simple very 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 simple simplicity really helps a lot and so now that we have our mood board the next thing we are going to do is to create our style guide now what is a style guide? Now, when you look at the UX design deliverables, okay? Um, look at the UX deliverables here. We have the wireframe, we have the prototype. When you go through each of all of these things, you realize that all of them have specific uses, right? And for this purpose, right, we have already designed our wireframe 
but then our design doesn't end at wireframe. We need it to we need to bring it to life. We need to make it look more creative. Now, how do you decide which what to go next? It depends on the process. We have everything we need. Now, the next thing we want to do is to design the actual layout. But then before we design the actual layout, how do we know we are using the right colors, we are using the right fonts, we are using this and that, right? That is where the style guide comes in. And so, just like we are doing as beginners, what is a style guide? Back to Google. Uh, I spelled this wrong. Okay. Great. So let's see. So I would take the first one. Oh, Google, I said a star guide. <laughs> anyway, it's the same thing. A type of template file consisting of fonts and layout settings to give a standardized look to a document. Okay. So basically what this means is that we have a set of fonts, colors, typography, things like that, that will help us keep our design very consistent. And usually the style guide comes from the branding of the organization that you are working for. So what do we need for a style guide in this case? So back to the mood board, right? Again, one of the practices I'm teaching you here is learn how to document as you go forward. So first of all, uh, we put together the structure, how it's going to look like. We put together the visual aspect of it. The mood board, we've categorized how we want our mood board to be generated. And then the next thing we are doing is what do we need to create our style guide? First thing is what? The logo, right? Second thing is what? The colors. The other thing is the typography, right? So I think this should be enough. So we need a logo, we need a colors, and then we need a typography. Now, what is a logo? We all understand that a logo is the visual representation of what a brand can be or an idea is. And so when you see the logo, it gives you an idea what brand you are dealing with. What is a color? We all know what colors are. We know. Uh, you can spend some more time learning about the meaning of various colors. So let me just um, color uh, psychology in design. Uh, great. So when you have time, you can read more about this. But then basically, it will be on... The, this lesson page, let me just copy the link. In fact, let me just give you access to this whole page. Right, so we've learned what a style guide is, what consists of a style guide and all of those. And color is an essential part of creating a style guide. Now, it, it's important to know what colors, various types of colors, the meaning of colors and all of those stuff, right? But then for today, I think this is something you can read on when you are free, um, just to gain that knowledge that you need about colors. But we've been saved the fact that the company we are dealing with already has its own colors and um, how things are done and a visual styling. So we are going to take a lot of inspiration of pick stuff from here. So we don't need to think about the colors to use. And in most, most cases, if you are not doing branding work, you don't need to think about these things. And so um, for our typography colors, and then even images, you are going to take a lot of those things from here. So what do we do? What I would usually do is, I'm going to screenshot this page, okay? I'm going to sp screenshot this page and then pick the colors from, um, Okay, I've already been give, giving the colors, but I'll still screenshot this page uh, just to give me an idea um, how things are laid out. For instance, you see that how the buttons are designed, blah, blah, blah. So I have this um, um, plugin 
uh, in Chrome. So the Chrome extension that is, it's, it's called Go Full Page. Um, you can use it to take screenshots of a whole website page. So I'm going to use that to take the screenshots. Um, don't worry, you can just do normal screenshots. Um, but because I'm lazy, uh, I like to do this. So now back here, again, just copy and paste and we are good to go. So we have the entire website here. So you see how certain elements are used in a website. Um, the titles are italic and the font sizing, the colors and all of those things. So we are going to create our color guide, the style guide based on this. So now what font is being used here? Again, I have another uh, Chrome extension that it's called what font and it's going to show me which font is being used here. So when we check, uh, the, it says the font family is Proxima Nova. And for, let's see this, right? Uh, Chrome extensions. So, okay, so, the first one is go full, is it full screen also? Let's see, yeah, this. The second one is what font? Oh no. Mm, yeah, that's it. No, I don't think that's it, but anyway, this should also work. And then the third one is mobile responsive. This one. Good. So with this mobile responsive, it helps you to also take screenshots on a mobile page. So you see this screen, you can just go here and it can take a screenshot. So you decide whether you see full page screenshot, screenshot without the device and stuff. So let's see, take full page. It takes just like that one does for me as well. Great, and I have my screenshot. So again, I like to copy and paste. This, screen, this uh, extension is so nice. So I have this and all I'm gonna do here is just paste. And then I have my mobile page right here. So you see, very simple and straightforward. Okay, cool. Now, back to, for the next um, step, we are going to create our style guide, okay? So now we have our mood board, a very, very simple mood board. The next thing we are going to do, so let's create a new page called style guide. Now, there are various um, ways you can create a style guide. Um, and um, there are so many things to consider when creating a style guide. But then we are just going to focus on these three things here. So I'm just going to copy this and bring them here. So we are just going to get the logo. Um, so again, because we are lazy, uh, but then we are smart, we'll just, uh, okay, this is same like an SVG logo. Let's see, yeah, it's an SVG logo. And so we just copy the SVG code and paste it here. Don't be surprised. Figma is also a web development tool in a way. And so it recognizes the SVG as well. And so just by copying the SVG here, so you see the SVG. So as far as it's in the SVG uh, uh, tags here, it will recognize it and then give us the actual SVG when we just copy the HTML and then paste it here. So let me go through that again. Basically, I just inspect this. 
go to the SVG, make sure I'm on the SVG element here. Just copy, then control C, control V, paste. So that's how we get the um, logo, as simple as that. Is that okay with everybody? <laughs> okay, cool. Great. Now, the next thing we are going to do is establish um, our color styles. Uh, we've been fortunate to be provided with the color styles. Okay. So I'm going to teach you another trick in Figma that is going to be, I would probably say, your Swiss Army knife when you're designing layouts. And let me just go to search for Figma or to layout and just add a link there. And guys, um, please learn everything you can about Figma auto layout. Okay. Please learn everything you can because we'll be using it a lot. So Figma auto layout. I think there are YouTube tutorials. Figma auto layout. YouTube. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Great, so there's a whole one hour video on auto layouts. And trust me, if you are very comfortable with auto layouts, you would be extremely comfortable with accelerating your design uh, UI skills. And so I'm just adding this here as well. And so, okay, actually, actually, we are going to learn everything about auto layouts tomorrow, okay? So what we are going to do is to design um, our color palette or our color scheme. So again, we like to document everything that we do. So we have color uh, scheme, great. So for our color scheme, um, we are going to do something here, okay? Now, we are going to use frame, okay? Now select the frame tool, and then there's another trick to creating a perfect square. So when you select this, press shift and hold shift as you draw, it gives you this perfect square, okay? So hold shift and then click and drag to create your perfect square. Now, we are going to, and then also another thing you need to learn is how to name layers, okay? So we are going to name this color, um, color, color box, something like that, however you want to label it. Then the next thing we are going to do is to, um, to duplicate this text, okay? And then, uh, let me see, let me see. To duplicate this text and then put it here, okay? Uh, we are going to, for instance, change this to black. Now make the text size, the font size 32, uh, make it bold, and then line height. So for the line height, you can use percentages. So I usually like to use 100%. So you can use an absolute value or a percentage or a relative uh, measurement. Same like the way CSS works. Now we have the color scheme, okay? So we are going to copy this color code. So 007D7F, and then we are going to put it here. Sorry, uh, put it here like this, okay? Great. Now, let's again copy this, okay? And then let's select this. Select the frame. So you can select the frame here, color box, or you can select it by selecting here. Then you paste the color code or you type in the color code and then we have the color, okay? Then again, for color contrast and accessibility, you want to make sure they are opposite, it's high contrast. So we do something like this. Now that we have this, um, what we are going to do is to, again, use our trick to duplicate this. 
okay duplicate this follow the same process we get this color here um paste it here we select the color box and paste it in a color box so this is yellow so what we are going to do is to change the color of this now there is another trick to using colors on your page which is using the eyedropper tool now i have selected this and then i click on this you see that i can choose the colors here i can choose whatever but then there is this tool here which allows you to eye drop. So eye dropping basically means that you can use this tool to fill this color in here. Okay. So we'll be using this color eye dropper tool a lot later. So we continue right to the third color. Sorry. Uh, third color, which is this. So paste it here. Select the box and then we paste it here. You see bad color contrast. So what do we do? We can do something like this. Okay. And then the next one is zero, zero, zero. Um, so let's duplicate this down here. This is zero, zero, zero. And zero, zero, zero is what? Black. So zero, zero, zero is black. Great, we duplicate this. The next one is FFF, which is white, FFF. So what do we do? We change this to black, the text, and then we change this to white. Then we have three more colors, okay? So again, about reusing components to speed up, speed up our work, just drag across, select, hold, shift, uh, option to duplicate. And then just select this. So I'm going to go with entering this. Blue. We change it here. The next one, this. And you realize that as I'm designing, I'm improving my workflow. So initially I was entering it here before entering it here. But then I realized that it's faster to just see the color and then as I enter this, right, so I know that this is the color. As I enter this, still the text is selected. So all I need to do is just, so as you go, you optimize your workflow um, for what works for you best. Great. Great. So let me make all of these white. So we have this really, really nice and amazing color scheme. Okay. So we are done with our color scheme. So this is how we create a color scheme. There are cases where people have names for their colors. So you realize that you see a color scheme, something like teal, there is a name for the color. You can also do that if you have names, but I think for now, this is fine for now for us, okay? So this is a very basic color scheme. Let me see if there are questions. Any question? No question, okay. Now that we have our color scheme, um, the next thing we are going to do is, uh, so we have our logo. So let me just also bring the logo here somewhere. Let's increase the size a little. And again, if you want to keep things proportional, just make sure you press shift as you are dragging. You see that it keeps the shape proportional. If I don't press shift, this is what will happen, okay? So we have the logo, we have the colors. The next thing is typography. Okay, great. Now, for the typography, um, we are going to again, keep it very simple. When we used the font extension to check, right? It gave us the font name Proxima Nova. Now, a lot of people do not have this font uh and not to bother you to go and design a uh, download fonts and all of those stuff what we are going to use is an alternative that looks exactly like this and then that font is also a google font that brings us to the next question or the next section of this how to find fonts to use for your design so there are various platforms where you can find fonts again i'm going to add it here 
and our resources here. Once. Okay. So the first one is this platform called Font Share. So if you want to design a logo, you want to design a website, whatever, um, you can find your font here. Another one is Kufal Fonts. Uh, some of the fonts here are paid in a way pirated. So be careful. Fontshare has really great fonts um, that are extremely free as well. So you see very, very nice fonts that are free. You can play with them if you want. But then the ultimate uh, place to get the font is Google Fonts. Um, so Google Fonts. And get all your fonts you ever need in this live here. So again, I would put this on top. So if you, again, Google Fonts provides you most of the fonts you need, right? And in most of my designs, there is only one major font I use, which is Inter. Uh, where is Inter? Inter, where are you? Okay, um, again, if I'm sure, I just enter Google Fonts, let's see, great. Google just does everything for me. Now we have our style guide, okay? And then we know our fonts we are going to use is Inter, okay? So we don't need to go much into typography, all of that will come as we are designing the site. Now, there is, something in Figma called styles and variables, okay? If you understand how variables are used in CSS or frameworks like Tailwind and the rest, then it's the same principle here, okay? Now, styles, styles in Figma are basically, they work like reusable elements, okay? So once we define a style, we can use it anywhere. So let me just demonstrate one to you. So let's say we have this um, here. Okay, we have this here, we have this here. Now, in creating a new style, a color style, okay? So one aspect of the style is colors. You can create styles for shadows, lines, uh, borders, fonts, and all of those stuff. But let's focus on colors right now. Now, in creating style, Okay, we've now we now have our color scheme. So how do we compare that to style? We just select this, right? And then on the fill, okay, we click we click this here, and then we click on this. It's, it tells you to create a new style or variable. What we want to create is a style. So we click on here and make sure that it's on style. We can decide to also create a variable if we want, but we will not get it to variables right now. It's quite complex in Figma for now, but then let's focus on styles. So we have style here and then we just give a name to it like the primary one. Okay, and then we can describe it as, this is the main, the main brand color. Okay, then we create the style. Now notice what happens when we, do not select anything. You see here, local styles, and then we have the primary one, okay? And then it shows the information we need, right? So that is how to create a color style. Let me go through it again. You select the where the color is that you want to use. You come to the fill. You click on styles and variables, these four dots. You click on the plus here. You make sure it's on style, primary two. This is the secondary color of the brand. So let me just name it secondary. Give it a name. Descriptions are not compulsory. I never do it anyway. I'm just doing it for this sake. And name, and then you create the style. So that is how you create color styles. Okay? So you realize that all of them are stored here. So let me change these to primary and then secondary. Now, how do we use these styles? Okay, as I said, we've created a color styles and we want to use them on the design. Basically, 
you basically just select the element you want to apply the color style to. Here on the fill, you click this, and then you see that there are two color styles here. And now we want to apply the primary color style. We just apply it. Here, we want to apply the secondary color style. We apply it. So you realize that in principle, right, once we define our styles, even in code, you define the real styles, you give them hex or whatever, HSL colors and all of those stuff. And then what you are doing is you are applying these styles to the element. So this time you are not using the hex code here, but then you are using the style. And what that means is that if let's say we use this style on elements, several elements like this, okay? And then we realize that, oh, the color code we are using is wrong. You do not expect us to go to all these designs. Again, if we're just using the hex code, right? So let's say I have this and then I, I drop, let's say I'm using the actual hex code, right? So these four designs here, okay? So this one has the actual code and then these ones have the styles or the variable we are using, okay? Now, our project manager comes down, oh, we made a mistake with the code. And let's say these are four different pages on the website. You do not expect us to go to each of those pages or each of those sections to change the colors, no. All we need to do is to go here and then let's say the secondary color we are supposed to use is this. You just change the hex code under this particular secondary guide here, right? And then you realize that it affects all of the components or all of the elements with the secondary style guide. But then for the elements that are not using the style, they are not affected, okay? So basically the styles allow you to work better or faster. Right. So once you set these styles, they are global styles that are like, for instance, I can use the same style here. It's available everywhere. If I make changes, see here. So let's say I come back here. And then on my styles, right, I make a change for it to use this. Okay. It changes everywhere. It changes here. And then it even where is this? It even changes here. That is basically how styles work.